So in this video, we're going to talk about adjusting your calories and ideally you need to have been tracking your calories for two weeks or more. So before we get into the nitty gritty of this video, I need you to have watched my video on how to track progress where you weigh yourself three times per week and get the average. I also need you to have watched my video on realistic expectations and also be really confident that you know the rest of the videos that we've done if you're on a six week transformation. So by now you need to be pretty confident that you are happy with the average weight tool. So you got weighed the week before, you took, you took your three weights, you added them, added them together, divided by three. The next week you take in your three weights, you add them together, you divide by three. Now we're comparing them and what, can, what we're gonna do is use them to make some changes to the calories that you're eating. So for this bit, you will need to have watched my previous video when we talked about realistic expectations. So for most of you, after watching that video, we'll be aiming for around about 1% weight loss per week. So for most people, that's between one and two pounds. If you've achieved that, if you've achieved one or two pounds or close to that, just continue. The calories you've got set are right, the way you're tracking is right, and the activity you're doing is right. So let's just crack on, let's just get this another two pound or another one pound next week. If you've lost more than 1% and you're coming towards 2% weight loss, consider adding 50 to 100 calories to your day's calorie each day, just to bring your calories up a little bit. And ideally next week will be 1% and you're not causing any of, the, any of the effects we spoke about in previous videos by being more than the 1%, which I spoke about being the sweet spot. Now this next bit, if weight loss hasn't happened or you've stayed the same weight, but you wanna achieve weight loss, there's quite a lot of reasons why this might happen. And again, if you want, if you do want to upgrade to one-to-one -one coaching, if you haven't done that, shoot me a message, but I'm gonna go through a lot of the information on how we can make this work for you. So you can see on screen now the how to adjust graphic. And as you can see, there's loads of reasons on the left in the, in the orange as to why weight loss might have ha not have happened. It's not because a calorie deficit doesn't work as much as you wanna believe that, it's not that. It's simply because of one of the other reasons. So if weight loss hasn't happened, I want you to look at yourself honestly, because it's only you doing this to yourself. I need you to understand that all of the food needs to go into my fitness pal like you've been eating. Has that happened? Could you have forgot anything each day or just a few times? Have you been out for a meal and you've not tracked properly? Are you not weighing things? So for example, do you wake up in the morning and not weigh your breakfast or do you not weigh foods? Is somebody else tracking the calories for you and it could be completely wrong or you're just making some mistakes? So you need to have a look at what you've done over the past couple of weeks to see if there are any, any mistakes that have been made. There's no point me making changes to the calories that you're eating if calorie tracking isn't being done properly or nearly properly because we don't really know what the calories you're eating in the first place are. I wanna give you some examples just to put it into real world life. I had a client on about week five, no weight loss had happened. He'd actually gone up a couple of times. He was telling me he was tracking properly. He was telling me he was getting weighed three times a week and doing everything properly. So when we dug a bit deeper into what was happening, we spoke and went through each meal by meal and what he was doing. And it turned out that the bowl of porridge he was having in the morning, because he was busy, like most of us are, he wasn't weighing. So I said, okay, cool. How much have you got in there for your, for your bowl of porridge? And he was like, 300 calories. I was like, okay. So tomorrow, weigh your porridge, weigh what you put in there, which was some whey protein powder and some fruit and some yogurt and whatnot. Tell me how much it works out to. And when he actually weighed it, it, he figured out he was eating around about 850 calories for his breakfast, which of course adds 500 odd calories onto his day, which took him straight out of a calorie deficit. So he wasn't losing any weight. And it was simply because he wasn't weighing his breakfast, even though he was weighing everything else during the rest of the day. Another lady, months and months went by, weight loss was happening, weight loss was happening, weight loss was happening. Then it stopped and it sort of went back up a little bit and then it went down and up and down and up and down. Again, she was promised that she was weighing everything. Everything was the same, nothing had changed. So we simply went through her day, meal by meal, and we discovered that her evening meal, which was always similar, was being cooked by her partner. Now her partner, when she went and watched what he was doing, was putting coconut oil in every single meal, but like tablespoons and tablespoons and tablespoons of coconut oil, but it wasn't on a piece of paper. He was giving her to tell her how many calories and how much each food weighed. 
So when she asked him, why haven't you been putting that on my list? He was like, well, coconut oil's got no calories in it, has it? So what happened there was, it wasn't actually her fault, it was actually her husband's fault, and also he didn't even mean to do that because he just made a mistake because he was not knowledgeable in the nutrition world. So the reason for telling you these two stories are, and there's loads of them over and over again, I've experienced over the past 10 years of coaching people, is that people can make mistakes without even knowing they're making mistakes. So what I need you to do before we make any adjustments to your calories is to look at yourself, look at your diet, make sure that everything is going into my fitness pal. This means before you've eaten the food, it needs to go into my fitness pal. So it's impossible to remember what you've eaten during a day as hard as you try to think that you've got it right. Um, there were some studies done on some dietitians. So these are really clever people who do nutrition as a life. They were put into a, a group and they were asked to remember what they'd eaten for, during the day and then to put themselves into a calorie deficit. And these guys were 50% out on their uh, expectations of what they'd eaten during the day. So if they're 50% out and they're studied in the area of nutrition, I promise you, you've got no chance of remembering what you've eaten every single day, especially because you're so busy. So what I recommend is before it goes in your mouth, quickly get your phone out and just type in what you're eating, even if it's a snack. Then, if you've discovered some areas where you've been making mistakes, let's just say, for example, you didn't put oil into my fitness pal, like the lady did. What you're gonna do is just crack on, do another week, and you're gonna try and hit the right calorie number by tracking properly. Now, if you've looked at yourself and you've gone, I'm sure everything is right, which is nearly 99% of people, by the way, so do have a proper look at yourself. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna take away 50 to 100 calories, depending on how much weight you haven't lost. So for example, if you've gained a little bit, bit of weight, take off 100. Alternatively, you can add in some exercise. So you can add in 100 calories of exercise, you can add in another gym session, you can add in another class, you can add in more walking. So if you're doing 5,000 steps on average, up it to 10,000 steps. If you're doing 10,000 steps, maybe push it to 1,250 steps. So what you're not gonna do is make huge changes. You're just gonna look for consistency and consistency over, over time is where the big changes are gonna be made. So if you can stick to the calorie number and you can also stick to it consistently, that's gonna where the changes are gonna make. But I don't want you to make a huge change, just a little change at this point. And all you're gonna do is just crack on with that change or not that change for another week and just be consistent.